Morning folks and welcome back. I'm out on a small local woodland today to cook up a bit of lunch. I've just gathered up a load of firewood. There's plenty of uh, dead standing and you know branches caught up in trees in this in this bit of woodland and I've snapped up a load of small twigs to get the fire started. Um, apologies if you can hear any banging in the distance. There's some construction work going on. It's a fair way off. I don't know whether you'll pick it up on camera. I can hear it, but yeah, I can hear nail guns going off. <laughs> Maybe some roofing roofing work going on or something or other. So uh, if you can hear that, apologies. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get my fire lit in a second, get things organized, and then uh, I'll explain what it is I'm cooking today. I'm gonna use some fat wood to get my uh, fire started today. So I'm gonna make some shavings on here, create some nice curls that'll catch a spark. And that should be enough to get those fine twiggy bits of uh, <laughs> wood that I gathered up. They're all a bit damp, but hopefully it'll be all right. I'm going to be making some cheese and jalapeno bread today. Uh, so while that fire is heating up and uh, creating some nice coals, I'm going to get on and, uh, and make the dough because there's a bit of time involved with, you know, proving times and all the rest of it to get that nice light bread. So um, I need to get to get cracking. It's my normal bread recipe that you may have seen me use before. I use it for bread, I use it for pizza bases. Um, it's a kind of one bread fits all for me. <laughs> it's easy to remember. Um, the only difference is I've halved everything today because I don't need to have uh, such a big loaf. So, um, you know, my normal ingredients just half everything and uh, that's kind of what it is. I've got my flour here. So it's half a pound of plain white flour and half a pound of strong white bread flour and half an ounce of salt and I've got it in a, in a bag so that I can mix it up and the messy part is all kind of contained within the, within the bag. I'll add the, um, the liquid to this and kind of mix it in the bag and um, it minimizes the amount of mess <laughs> all over my fingers. There'll be some, but it won't be as bad. Before I mix anything, I'm just gonna warm my water up here just so that it's tepid. It doesn't wanna be too warm, but um, it does need to be a bit warm. And I'm going to add some butter to it this time. I don't normally, but I want this bread to be nice and buttery. And then I'm just going to nestle it into my, or close into my very feeble fire here. <laughs> We've had um, three or four weeks of really wet weather here in the UK and everything is um, really damp. I probably should have split this wood down a bit to get to the dry wood inside, but hey ho. So I'm just going to let that warm up a bit. I'll keep Keep checking it. I don't want it to be hot, otherwise it'll kill the yeast. I'm going to use my reflector oven to cook this um, this bread, to bake this bread. Um, this is one I made years ago. <laughs> I'll put a link to the video, it's a very old video, um, of when I made this, uh, in case you're interested. But um, yeah, it's a, a good system. Works on the principle of reflective heat, well, direct and reflective heat. Um, and you just place it next to your fire and you can you can bake. Um, you know, bread and biscuits and all sorts of things in it, and it packs down flat 
which is uh, really handy when you're when you're sort of backpacking or canoe canoe tripping or whatever. Okay, that water is warm and the butter is melted. I'm gonna pour a little bit in this cup here. And then into that, I'm gonna pour my sugar. I've got half an ounce of white sugar and a small pack of dried yeast. And the yeast will just feed off the sugar that bit of water and should foam up and start to get a bit lively. The yeast and sugar mixture is starting to bubble up quite nicely and before it spills out over the top of my cup I'm going to start adding it to my flour. Give that a mix up first. Just keep adding the water and the butter bit by bit, mixing it until I've got my dough. And I'm kind of looking for a, not a dry dough, but one that won't stick to my hands. Um, you know, I don't want it to be sticky. I want it to be dry enough that it kind of comes away from my hands, um, but not too dry at the same time. definitely getting there. I did bring some extra flour with me. I'd <laughs> urge anybody doing this out in the woods to bring extra flour just in case you add a bit too much liquid. And then you can recover it by just adding a bit more flour. But I think that's probably about it. That's kind of the consistency I'm looking for. See, it's not really sticking to my hands. moved my uh, table over to this log over here um, and folded the legs up just because <laughs> from experience I know that the um, legs can't really take the kneading and um, I've end up, ended up bending my table in the past so um, I thought safer to have the legs bent and then do this on this log where it's not going to move about in the mud. I'm actually going to add a little bit more flour. I went slightly over it's got a little bit of stickiness to it. This is why it's a good idea to have some spare. <laughs> the really important stage this is because it creates that structure in the dough. Makes your bread nice and springy. I'll just spend a good five minutes doing this. Right, that's had its kneading. And I'm gonna make three deep cuts in the dough like this. And I'm gonna put it back in the bag that I mixed it in to prove. I'll put this somewhere warm near the fire, not too close so it melts the bag, but close enough so that it's warm. And I'm gonna wait for that to double in size and that'll be its first proving. There will be another proving once I've um, made the, the bread. Mm. 
while the uh, bread dough is proving, um, I'm gonna make a start on the second part of my lunch because you can't just have bread for lunch. <laughs> Need something to dunk it in. So I'm gonna be making a soup, a French onion soup. Really quick and easy recipe, this one. French onion soup normally takes ages, um, but this recipe is about 15, 20 minutes, so perfect. And um, that can be um, cooking while the, uh, while the bread is in baking. So I thought I'd make a start and get the onion chopped up now. Just gonna slice the onion reasonably thinly, but it doesn't have to be, you know, wafer thin. Right, that has doubled in size. Time to knead again. Knock all that air back out. And then this time, instead of making it into a ball and cutting it with my knife, Sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top and I want to roll it out. So I'm just going to use my water bottle here. I want to roll it out into a rough rectangle. And then in here I've got some garlic salt. I'm just going to sprinkle that over my dough. And then plenty of grated cheddar cheese. And then a good old dosing of jalapenos. As many as you dare. Trying to flick some of the liquid off. And I'm gonna kind of press those down a little bit into the cheese. And what I want to do is roll it up lengthwise. Into a big long sausage. Then starting not quite at the end, I'm going to slice it in half. And I'm going to fold it, sort of roll it, so that those cut ends are facing upwards. Further there. And I'm literally going to put one over the other and just keep twisting them over like a rope. Fancy. And then I'm going to bake it in one of these disposable foil baking trays. So I just need to carefully transfer it over. Something like that. And I'm going to pop that back in the bag again for its second proof. Once again, just looking for that to uh, double in size. Got 
some butter in my little tiny <laughs> Dutch oven here. Petromax actually do a smaller one than this, can you believe it? <laughs> bit of uh, brown sugar, a little bit of pepper, and salt. And then in with those onions to cook down. Right, I think that is ready to go in. I'm gonna slot that into the reflector oven, get it nice and close to the fire, and that can start baking. I've just turned the bread around. It does cook from the back due to the shape of the reflector oven. You know, it reflects heat to the back of it, but it does cook faster on the front. <laughs> so to avoid it burning on the front, I've just, uh, I've just turned it around just to get a bit more of an even cook. Those onions have got a nice color now. So I'm gonna deglaze the pan with some red wine. Get all that lovely caramelized flavor off the bottom of the Dutch oven. And then in with a beef stock pot and some water and a couple of sprigs of thyme. Oh man, <laughs> that smells good. Let's give it a whirl. Get some of that onion and some of that cheese. Mm. Look at those onions look. In that rich, rich soup. Goes perfectly with this bread. Let's get a bit of onion on there. That felt quite extravagant for lunch for one in the woods, but I've got leftovers. I've got half of this jalapeno bread and a little bit of soup left, so I shall uh, take them home and um, hopefully the rest of the family will enjoy them as much as I did. <laughs> yeah, that was really nice. The soup was, was really rich, almost like a gravy with cheese. <laughs> um, and uh, the bread was perfect, dunked in it. 
the warmth from the uh, the jalapenos and the, and the cheese running through the bread, just delicious. The bread did get gooier as I got into the center and it was just delicious dunked in that soup. You've got to have something to dunk your bread in. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.